Today on Celebrity Lemonade Stand, actor, comedian, and author, Kel Mitchell. <laughs> Shaq. I won a dance battle against Shaq. It's just been awesome, like 25 years later, you have five-year-olds doing Good Burger <laughs> birthdays. It almost didn't happen, y'all. Join me as we peel back the layers into the rarely seen lives of our favorite celebrities. They'll take us on the journey from their first jobs to their latest money-making venture. Kel Mitchell, welcome to the Celebrity Lemonade Stand. This is amazing. <laughs> this is so cool, man. You didn't expect a whole lemonade stand, did you? I didn't, <laughs> man. Got the wheel. Uh, you, know, well, you know, that's where it starts for a lot of people. It starts yeah. at the Lemonade Stand as their first venture as entrepreneurs. And now you're a big-time star. You got your new book out. So before we get into all of that, we got to rewind a little bit, all right? So okay. let's take it back to when you were a kid, to your first lemonade stand or that version of. So what was your first job? My grandmother, uh, she owned a beauty salon, but she also had... Uh, but wait, wait, and the, the beauty salon, were you just sweeping the floors or were you actually helping in the process? Like, <laughs> well, can, I didn't you, work... can you twist that? <laughs> well, I didn't work at the salon, okay. but then uh, at the house, too, uh, she was always doing, like, amazing jobs, had everybody working. I worked, me and my sister, we worked at the candy store wow. uh, in the garage, uh, and they used to come in, the kids would come by, all in the neighborhood, and it was full out like candy store. We had everything. Well, we, I, I made ices. The, the FDA would approve that. Like y'all were selling candy out of the garage. Yeah. Your house. Well, it was all. It was all. We did everything right. All the permits okay. and everything. <laughs> She okay. did everything right. Right, right. Yeah. So at that point, were you like one candy for you, one candy for me? One candy, like, were you legit? <laughs> oh yeah, I was legit. You know, grandma was on it, so she made sure, and I made ices and uh -huh. the whole thing. Yeah, it was cool. Wow. And she, she lived right next to a, a park too, so all the kids would go to the park. They come over, you know, and like, uh, uh, let me get some candy. Let me get some. Like, we got you. Hey, that's perfect setup. So, yeah. well, what do you think you learned from that experience? Because that, that's yeah. first of all, a lot of jobs. Yeah. Second of all, that's a, a great hustle. But yeah. what did it teach you? Working hard, consistency, working together as a team. Uh -huh. I saw that too. We got to yeah. talk about Good Burger, all of that. Of course. What does that fame mean to you that so many children grew up watching you? And now my kids are also watching you yeah. on all those reruns. How does that feel and what does that mean to you? Dude, it's, it's humbling. You know, Good Burger <laughs> and having all that just take off, like the first sketch comedy show for kids. Uh, which was the first of its kind. It was like a, a young and living color, a young SNL. And it's just been awesome. Like 25 years later, you have five year olds doing Good Burger <laughs> birthdays. They weren't even born, you know, right, right, back right. then. And they're having like these Good Burger themed birthdays and all this stuff like that. So it says a lot to the writers, it says a lot to the producers. It's just awesome. And it, it almost didn't happen, y'all. You know what I mean? It was just like they, uh, Nickelodeon had never done a show like that before. So they wanted to try it out, you know, and just see. They never did a show so diverse. A show that had so much like hip hop in it and things like that, and they tried it out, and the ratings went through the roof. Yeah. And, there, and yeah. the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so from your first yeah. job selling candy, working in the hair salon, to yeah. now a book author with two books under your belt. Thank you. And this new book, Prank Day, is yes. hilarious. It's fun. What made you decide to write this book? So first of all, uh, I love uh, like you know a lot of movies that have like the real like adventure. Um, you know, uh, race to the finish. And I wanted to do that with a book, like a kid adventure book that's all about kids, just super, super fun. And I had this great idea of like, okay, what if all your April Fool pranks came true oh, no. the next day? <laughs> what if you did a prank that changes your entire life completely if it comes mm. true? And so uh, that's what happens in this book. And then also too, there's a, really a message in here is like uh, to be yourself. Was the whole book in your head, or did you have to like really sit and think <laughs> about what's next? What do I do? How do I you know, conceptualize this? I love being an author, man, because mm -hmm. uh, it takes you on a journey with each chapter and learning the character arcs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, there's parts in there where you got to figure out, okay, uh, I know they have to get over an obstacle. I know they got to get through some things. Okay, what is that obstacle? And it takes you on a journey. I love that. I wanted everyone to relate to each character. That's why the book is very diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, each character is very different. Uh, like my character Bobby, who's his best friend, Chase, in there. Uh, you know, he has he's an amputee, so he has a you know his arm is missing, but then he has like this prosthetic arm that's like futuristic, right? And I've never seen that in a book. And I have a cousin, 
that uh, she lost both of her legs at a very young age, uh, but she had these prosthetic legs, and you would never know. You know what I mean? She had just do everything that we did, yeah. you know, all, all the stuff that we did, and I was just like, I want that to be in a book as well. And, yeah. It has all the makings to me of a film. I, I heard <laughs> that it was actually a film project at one time, so what happened there, and how did you change it from being a film to a, then a book? It was a script, mm -hmm. uh, ready to go, green light. We were actually, oh, you know, having people in, and so uh, at the company, what happened, happened was was that people got let go and went to other jobs you know what I mean and and then my the script was just sitting there yeah. and I was just like yo we need to get it back right we need to get it back and so my attorney did my his attorney oh. thing good good, <laughs> shout, good. Out my <laughs> shout out to the team uh got it back and then uh -huh. I was just kind of sitting on it and uh I had my uh book bless mode that came out mm -hmm. And they were like, yo, you got anything else, the publishing company? And I sent them over. Originally, it was called April 2nd. Oh. Sent that over to them. They loved it. They were like, yo, let's do this. And uh -huh. I was like, this is beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. And to everybody that's like, you know, an entrepreneur, and you have a dream or you have a project that you're working on, and it might not go the way you thought it was going to go in the beginning mm -hmm. process of yeah. it, there's always another door that's going to open. This is the way it was supposed to be, you know, and it's, it's deep because some books uh, turn into movies. Mm -hmm. And for this book, it was just a movie script that turned into a novel now. And then we'll just probably go back around and keep going back around, which is well, super cool. But you make it sound <laughs> yeah. easy. And a lot of times yeah. that's difficult when people see a door shut in their face. How do you get over that? And how do you move forward through that dark valley? To have that happen, it was devastating. But I was always kind of like, you know what? You know, it's still going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to find gratitude in everything. You know what I mean? At that moment when it hurts, it's like find gratitude in it. And you got to keep going. You got to have tough skin within this business and, and just in, within within life. Right. And have that faith that it's still going to work out. Because, yeah. you know, your talent's not going to go anywhere. Your creativity is not going to go anywhere. It's just that it needs to be placed in the right place. You know what I mean? Got to place it in the right place. Yeah. A lot of times in life, it is easier when you're dealt a good hand. And sometimes yeah. the hand you're dealt depends on how successful you'll be or how you'll yeah. be able to turn that hand around. But yeah. what if you were dealt a hand of a popular, powerful, well-known people to help you out on that journey? We're going to play a game called Celebrity Squeeze. I love the word play okay. that you did. <laughs> so we have some celebrities here to help you okay. out. I'm going to ask you some questions. And then okay. you'll answer picking one of these cards depending on who you want to help you out with that situation. Do All I right. have to talk so, like them? or No, that okay. would be fun, though, if you talk like Eddie. <laughs> okay, no, okay, okay, so we're going to have your Eddie. You know him, of course, from Good Burger. Who's this guy? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Your, okay. your buddy, Keenan Thompson. Hey, what's up, okay. bro? Shaquille O'Neal, entrepreneur and yes. former NBA star, and the one and only powerhouse Kim Kardashian. Okay, I know all these people. This okay, so you have them to choose from. <laughs> we're going to ask you some fire questions. You go ahead, answer them, and tell me why you picked them. Okay, so who would you enjoy writing a book about in the future? Writing a book about in the yeah. future? Between these <laughs> <laughs> Shaq. Oh, really? Because I got some funny stories. I won a dance battle against Shaq. No. It was a break dance battle. It was very intense. He almost won. He hit me with the windmill. I don't know if you know, but Shaq is nice. He can pop yeah, stuff. I've seen the pop. And so we had a little dance oh, battle, and he almost you know, pushed me back with his long legs trying to do a windmill. But okay. I won. I won that one. Whew, was, okay, I'm glad you win. won. So you got some dance moves in you. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so you got that one. Okay, next one. He was like, I got you. Who would you I got want you, Kel. to? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of these stars would you yeah. like to co-author a book with? Now, remember, you're spending a lot of time with them. I'm going to do that boy oh, with Kitty. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we, that's we, a good we, one. We work well together. You know what oh, I mean? That's a good thing. And that's yeah. important when you're writing a book. You got to be work well with anybody you're in business with, right? Exactly. Okay, exactly. Cool. We will have some fun, man. We will All have right. some fun Looking with that. forward to that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so who yeah. would you like to take charge of your social media for the day? Oh, well, that's Kim. Oh, that's, that's, that was that's, easy. That's, 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 <laughs> as soon as I heard social media, right, immediately, right, right. I was like, yeah, yeah, she'll definitely help me out with that. Which one of these celebrities? Celebrities, would you like to direct the film version of your book, Prank Day? Well, this guy, I don't know what would happen. <laughs> I, he might not even, I mean, just, you know, <laughs> he might mess up one of the shots. Uh, yeah. Like, it might be funny, was though. I supposed to turn this on? Oh, no. What happened? Oh, goodness. I didn't get it. Uh, retake. Okay, well, you yeah. may not pick Ed for this next question, but okay. who would you want to get business advice from? Ah, that's a hard one between okay. these two, right? Okay, you know what I mean? That's like two. a Just real hard. Money, money, Shaq owns a lot of different okay. businesses, but Kim has a lot of businesses, so okay. I feel like 
Can I do a, sh- a, sh- a Shakima? A Shakima, okay. This well, is Shakima. Who would you want to grab a burger with at Good Burger? Oh, I got to do that with my boy. I got to do that with <laughs> Ed, okay, cool, cool. All right, okay. great job. Yes, that was yes, a lot yes. of fun. <laughs> Thanks for playing Celebrity Squeeze. Thank you, man. No, no doubt. <laughs> All right, Kel, this show is called Celebrity Lemonade Stand, and usually those stands are run by kids, so we want to go to the kidpreneurs out there, okay. our youngest moguls out there. Yeah. Let them ask you some questions, and then you can give them some advice from the pro. All right? Okay, let's All right, do so it. our first question comes from four-year-old Austin. What do you want to be when you're little? I would say I wanted to be a Tuskegee Airman. Wow, I, mean, uh, I love that. Yes. Like I loved seeing that when I was young, and so then I wanted to go to Tuskegee because of that, because my dad had introduced it to me when That's I was awesome. young. And then I wanted to be a scientist and all this different thing. But then I just, you know, fell in love with uh, entertainment mm. and uh, went went full full for it. So once you got I mean? bitten by the bug, that was it. Yeah, man. When wow. I got on, that hit that stage, and it was just like, oh, this yeah, is well, it. Kids yeah. definitely need to go yeah. look up the Tuskegee Airmen. That's a great lesson yes, your dad yes, taught you. Yes. All right, next question from five year old Carter. Yeah. What's the most expensive thing that you ever bought? Because I'm going to buy it too. Carter want to be a baller. He's going to buy it too. <laughs> <laughs> the most expensive thing I ever bought? Uh, you know, I, I would say houses. You should, your house should be that the most. You know what I mean? You know, your sanctuary. Now, did you uh, buy it to ball <laughs> out or were you investing? <laughs> well, investing. You know what okay. I mean? So, kid, invest. Uh, but <laughs> right, right. No, you're real on that. That's real, that's real, that's real talk, though. Yeah. You should definitely uh, invest in... Uh, using your money in that way. Um, take all your lemonade stand money. Yeah, and take your it. yeah okay. and invest in it. You know, you can get some. You can splurge a little bit too, as well. You know what I mean? And get some nice things. Uh, but Did you yeah, buy anybody else a house? Did you buy? <laughs> you know, people get big and they're like, I'm buying a house for yeah, everybody. Yeah, you gotta buy things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Well, next up, we have 12 year old Ilani. Hi. Who is your favorite cartoon character of all time? And why? Okay, well, I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, which one? And they're Ninja still favorite. killing it. Uh, Michelangelo. Okay, there you go. Was the man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Michelangelo with the nunchucks. Uh, right. You know, and I'm into Kung Fu and Taekwondo. Like in real life? Yeah, yeah like in uh, real life. Yeah, so I love ch- it. The, I do Taekwondo. I do that. Nunchucks so, too? Uh, yeah, I worked with nunchucks. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, okay. yeah, Mike, Michelangelo, man. He was on He was on the pop. How many times did you hit yourself with the- <laughs> I did. Oh, man, watching Bruce Lee, I hit myself a couple times and then... Working with my sister, uh, he had everything. He had the bowls and all that nice. stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let us find yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. Ninja. <laughs> yeah. All right, next up, six-year-old Gus. Let's get Frank to play on my mom. Okay, <laughs> well, this is one you can do. Uh, it was in prank day. Okay. Uh, get you some chocolate-covered onions. Uh, get a few that are apples. Make sure you eat the one that's an apple. Uh-huh. And then you have the other ones all be uh, chocolate-covered onions, and you get your mama one. If, as long as she's not allergic to onions, then you're good. Oh, okay. That'd that could be a funny or one. could not get you beat. <laughs> still, okay, but that's funny, I think though. she'll laugh. But she'll okay. go, ooh. And then, yeah. Make okay. sure you know the type of mama you got first. Though. Oh, please, do, please, because don't get yourself in trouble. All right, nine-year-old Lene, let's check this out. Where do you hear inspiration from? My beautiful wife is an inspiration to me, man. That's why they call her the better half. Yes, she is. And she's, <laughs> my wife is definitely the better half. Uh-huh. Uh, she's definitely an inspiration to me, man. Just, just at all the things that she does all the time. It's just like I'm so in awe all the time. Yeah, there you so, go. Yeah, Teamwork yeah. makes the dream Teamwork. work. Teamwork, come on, all man. Right. Shout out to the wives out there. Hey. All right. And shout out to all of our little entrepreneurs for helping us out with those great questions. Great advice also. They did great. Yeah. Thanks, man. Okay. <laughs>